Hey everyone, welcome to another review. Today we're doing Robert Zemeckis' latest movie. This is based on a true story. Um, Zemeckis is the one who gave us the Back to the Future trilogy. He also did Castaway, he also did Forrest Gump. And since he's gonna break out the toys, you damn well I'm gonna break out mines too. Um, nothing but uh, let's talk about Welcome to Marwin. Welcome to Marwin is the story about a person by the name of Mark Hogenkamp who comes back from the war, I won't say which one, comes back from the war, happens to go to a bar one night, gets drunk, tell, talks about what he enjoys doing in life, and gets the shit beat out of him to the point where he suffers... Um, brain damage and loses all memories before the event. Um, he decides that he wants to continue. He believes he was an artist beforehand. He believes he used to draw. But since he got beaten, he no longer really has the ability to write much. So he decides to make his own, what he believes is a Belgian camp in a fictional town called Marwin. And he decides he wants to be a photographer. And he takes pictures of his, his version of himself as a doll with women who he appreciates or who have helped him. I really wanted to like this movie. After seeing the second trailer for it, I was convinced this movie should be nominated for whatever awards. After seeing the Golden Globes, which once again doesn't really mean a whole lot, I was wondering, wait, what? And then the Rotten Tomato score dropped, and it was, and I say dropped, I think it opened at like 15% on Rotten Tomato. I didn't watch any reviews though. I wanted to go into this movie with fresh eyes, and 30 minutes into the movie, you can tell it's very apparent what's wrong with this movie. Robert Zemeckis decided that he, it was more important to tell the characters of the fictional world of Marwin, of the uh, Hogan camp, and Marwin the dolls, and the girls who live in that world, instead of telling the story of the real Mark Hogan camp. And at times, this movie feels very disjointed. There, it almost seems like it's a movie that's fighting itself. Because at times it's telling this story about the dolls and the showcase and just the, the violent acts that are going through. And at times it's showing what's happened to Mark Hogan camp and what he's battling through <clears throat> between his strange... Um, likes and what he's going through after having the crap kicked out of him because of it and it never really f works together at times they it, at times it does seem like the story just crashes together and it's like oh, okay now they're finally connecting the doll story and the real guy story the problem is the movie doesn't really seem to be interested in Mark's story and that becomes a problem because the doll story is not that interesting. A lot of people can call it sexist as there's no men in that. Um, there's only Mark, the women, and the Nazis. That's it. And it's so odd. You have this interesting person to look at. And you can do a deep dive into his psyche either from the uh, the post-traumatic stress disorder from being in war, an actual war, how he's coping through it, or even the interesting fact of who are these women? And this movie has no interest in any of that. And that's very sad. Uh, all the ladies in Marwin are supposed to represent real life characters. There's only one of them who gets really anything to do and that's a character by the name of Roberta, who played by uh, Miss Weaver, and because she's in it the most, and 
that's about it. She's also the she's also the owner of a hobby shop that Mark happens to go to to get dolls for his uh, fictional town. Leslie Mann is in this movie as someone who is new into town. She moves in. She's obviously heard about Mark's story, and she's just a next door neighbor. She tries to be interesting. But unfortunately, the movie doesn't give her a lot, just like it doesn't give really any of the women much to do other than you be there. Most of the characters who uh, Mark has e immortalized as dolls in, in his world barely get a scene. There's one person who the town is co-named by who is not even in the movie. She has a picture. That's it. And... It's like, there's so much interesting things, but Robert Zemeckis never cared to talk about the story, and that's very disappointing. Steve Carell is really good in this movie. He he does eternalize, and, and you can tell the wariness the, on his eyes. Um, when he gets to a moat, he does it well. When he has a chance to be that character, he's really well. When he, he has to sit there and show the emotion of like he's afraid of because of what is going on in his life of because of the beating because of the fact that he has to carry that he has no memory of anything before this beating but he remembers the beating he does it well this movie's just not interested in telling that story uh the craftsmanship in the movie is really well done it's well shot the spaces, the the parts with the dolls is really good. It's it 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 is visually impressive. Just the story's just not there. I felt bad. And also, one last thing: what should have been a really good emotional speech at the end is not as emotional because the whole speech is in the trailer. Please, Hollywood, stop doing this. Uh, I don't know what else to say about this. Oh, there is a shout out. This is a Zemeckis movie. He does a shout out to one of his earlier movies that is completely unnecessary. Didn't need to be there. And it was just like, oh, I see it. You're winking and nudging the audience to yourself. So, yeah, Welcome to Marwin. I wanted to be one of the best movies of the year, and it wasn't. I give it a five. I didn't hate it. I just saw so much more potential than the director did, and the screenplay obviously didn't as well. So, yeah, that's it. Um, I know a lot of people aren't going to watch Welcome to Marwin, but drop your thoughts in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and yeah, we'll be back for another movie.